We are standing in front of the first atomic bomber, the Enola Gay, a storied B-29 which carried the revolutionary atomic bomb to the enemy. Gathered here are a group of key men representing both the project personnel in the theater and the Air Corps. It was this group and this airplane which outmoded present warfare. This is Brigadier General Thomas F. Farrell of Albany, New York, theater commander of the Atomic Bomb Project. Will you tell us something of the Atomic Bomb Project, General Farrell? I know I speak for every man and woman of the huge throng who worked so long and so faithfully on this great, fantastic Fairyland project which has had such a tremendous impact on the war against Japan. So much credit is due to so many that it would be difficult to properly apportion that credit. We have, however, a sense of great moral responsibility because this great power has been given to us and we should be ever humble and grateful that it was given to us rather than to our enemies. And all of us who have had a part in its development and in carrying out its use should dedicate our strength our wealth, our brains, and even our very lives to see that it is always used for good and never for evil. Cut. This is Captain William Sterling Parsons, United States Navy of Fort Sumner, New Mexico. Captain Parsons made the original trip with the atomic bomb ship Enola Gay as weaponeer. He is in the theater as scientific head of the Atomic Bomb Project. Captain Parsons, will you tell us briefly the story of your trip from takeoff to target? After a photographing session that make it, made us feel like a Hollywood premiere, we uh, got off at about uh, 3 o'clock in the morning in the darkness and headed for Iwo Jima, which we reached about sunrise. We made uh, certain adjustments and tests on the bomb during that flight. We then headed for the Empire, and uh, the weather improved as we went along. We felt that it was our lucky day, and we knew it was as we made the final approach toward Hiroshima, which the navigator hit right on the button. The bombardier took over, identified the target, and everything went with perfection not approached in the rehearsals. The bomb was finally released exactly at the designated hour, and the explosion occurred as planned. This is Colonel Paul Tibbetts of Miami, Florida, commander of the Atomic Bomb Group. Colonel Tibbetts, will you tell us some of your reactions over the target? Well, as the bomb left the airplane, we took over uh, manual control made an extremely steep turn to try and put as much distance between ourselves and the explosion as possible. After we uh, felt the uh, explosion hit the airplane, that is the concussion waves, uh, we knew that the bomb had explosion, had exploded, everything was a success, so we turned around to take a look at it. The sight that greeted our eyes was quite uh, beyond what we had expected because we saw this cloud of boiling dust and debris below us with this tremendous mushroom on top. Uh, beneath that was hidden the ruins of the city of Hiroshima. This is Commander Frederick L. Ashworth, United States Navy of Wenham, Massachusetts, technical member of the crew in the second atomic bomb raid. Commander Ashworth, Give us some of your experiences over the target of Nagasaki. There was a tremendous suspense and tension as we approached the target because we had just failed to uh, be able to bomb our primary target. Uh, we made our tests as we proceeded into the dropping point. I knew that everything was functioning perfectly. At that time, the bombardier took over. He did 
an excellent job, for as soon as the bomb was released, there was, consider there was considerable relief, and I knew when I saw the flash of the explosion that the second atomic bomb had been successfully delivered to the en enemy. This is Major Tom Fairby of Marksville, North Carolina, bombardier of the first atomic bomber. Major Fairby, will you give us some of your reactions over the target of Hiroshima? Uh, my navigator had me perfectly lined up with the target. When I clutched in with my sight, I could clearly see the city of Hiroshima within my bomb sight. Then I clutched in and took the run, and I felt the bump of the airplane I was greatly relieved because I knew the unit had gone from the airplane that we had successfully delivered. It meant so much to the Army Air Forces, American science, and industry. This is Major Charles W. Sweeney of Quincy, Massachusetts, pilot of the Great Artiste, the second B-29 to drop an atomic bomb on the Empire. Major Sweeney, Give us some of the details of the whole flight. Uh, we were briefed on, of course, a primary and a secondary target, as usual. Uh, we uh, took off, and the flight was uneventful, except for some weather on the way up. Uh, the uh, primary target uh, was located, and uh, we made uh, three runs on it, but were unable to get into it. Uh, Commander Ashworth and I held a little conference with the bombardier and the navigator, and uh, we started for the secondary target, which was Nagasaki, at which time the uh, flight engineer told us we had just 1,300 gallons of gasoline left. We uh, picked our route into the secondary target and uh, dropped it on Nagasaki. Uh, we were very relieved to have it go much more relieved when we saw the tremendous flash and, know that it had func and knew that it had functioned. Uh, at that point, we hit the road for Okinawa, the first petrol station. This is Captain Kermit K. Behan of Houston, Texas, bombardier of the great Artiste. Captain Behan, what was your most outstanding experience on this historic flight? I suppose it was when the clouds opened up over the target at Nagasaki, target was there pretty as a picture. I made the run, let the bomb go. That was my greatest thrill. This is Captain Theodore J. Van Kirk of Northumberland, Pennsylvania, Colonel Tibbetts navigator. Captain Van Kirk, what was your feeling when you made your first landfall on the Empire? Well, I knew when we hit the coast of Japan that we were well on our way to completing a successful mission, and that the new bomb we carried would be a great help in shortening the war. Okay. Oh.